Nostalgia is different from history, and our isle has a long story to tell, dating back to Viking times and before. Pat Thompson has always had a keen interest of those who lived here in the past, and this is her contribution. The first inhabitants of Fair Isle, after the last Ice Age, were Neolithic people. They moved north through Scotland and Orkney and arrived here about 5,000 years ago. These settlers would have come ashore to an island covered in woodland and scrub of hazel, birch, alder, willow, juniper and heather. They cleared some of this in order to rear domesticated animals and grow grain, in much the same way that crofters work the land today. As prehistoric people began to exploit the landscape, they created dikes, which were walls constructed of turf to enclose or exclude animals and to provide shelter for growing crops. The Feely Dyke, which may date from this period, originally ran between the east and the west cliffs, separating the north and the south of the island. A much later stone dyke runs parallel to it, showing the continuity of land use between prehistoric people and more recent residents. Across the island are dis numerous distinctive crescent-shaped mounds dating from the Bronze Age. Stones were heated in fires which were then used to heat water for cooking, for tanning skins or as a sauna. When the stones cooled they shattered and were discarded, creating the mounds we see today. Burnt mounds are found across the western seaboard of Britain, Ireland and Scandinavia and in Fair Isle there are over 20. The climate deteriorated during the Bronze Age, which drove Iron Age people from about 7000 BC to the lower, more sheltered slopes of the island where farming was easier. And from the Iron Age, people also started to gather together for defensive purposes. One such site, protected from the North Atlantic wind, is Landberg Promontory Fort where excavation has revealed settlements right up to medieval times. The Vikings sailed across the North Sea to Shetland in the late 8th century and the legacy is seen all over the island in its place names. Fair Isle is also mentioned in the later Viking sagas, confirming that it was permanently inhabited by Scandinavian settlers by the 11th century. Both the Orkney Inga saga and Niles Saga mentioned the island's farms. The Orkneyinga Saga tells the story of a farmer, Dykfin Hogvison, who was in charge of the warning beacon, which was part of a signal system that communicated with Orkney. The island's location in the North Atlantic has made it a strategic point for numerous military campaigns over the centuries. Ward Hill is the highest point on the island, and it was the probable site of the beacon used by Viking settlers. From the 18th century, Malcolm's Head, further to the south, became the lookout tower during the Napoleonic Wars. During World War II, Ward Hill again became strategically important as a radar station was constructed on its summit. Even today, there is so much of the past to interest not only the connoisseur, but also those that have a latent interest in history and archaeology.